The buzz. The buzz. The buzz. The buzz. The buzz is on. The buzz is on. The show that gets you up close and personal with some of the hottest stars. Now, here's your host, Navelle J. Lee. Hey guys, it's Navelle J. Lee, and welcome into a new Buzzcast here at Buzzworthy Radio. I had the chance to sit down and catch up with Blake Barris, who now plays the role of Everett Lynch on Peacock's Days of Our Lives. And we got to talk a little bit about how he got to return to the show in this new role. Now, many of you will remember him playing the role of Nick Fallon previously, and this was probably one of my favorite interviews to do because it really just felt it was just old friends catching up and didn't really feel like a sit-down interview. This was so awesome, and I was so glad that I had the chance to speak with him about Everett, as well as potentially what's coming, as well as some other fun stuff behind the scenes. So take a listen to our chat with Blake Barris. You're on a new frontier yourself as Everett Lynch on the show, which I was one of the first few people to actually post out there on Instagram and just be, oh, by the way, everybody, Blake Barris is back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, what it's nice so exciting. Surprise. I'm what loving nice it. I'm loving it. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's uh, it's it's such a pleasure, and I love this character and this storyline, and um, can't wait for everyone to see the way it all plays out. Well, how did this play out? You getting back on the show as this as this new role because I know a lot of fans and I think I was probably one of them that I sent messages on because you had been making these semi sporadic appearances as Nick within the last few years in ghostly apparitions or <laughs> it was the the Christmas special that they did as well and a lot of us were wondering if there would ever be that opportunity that you would come back permanently. And then lo and behold, not long after that, we, we see in the promo trailer at day of days this past October that you were back on the show in this new role. So how did that even come to life? You know, it was sort of in, in, in stages, like you, like you just talked about, I was living in Ireland and my wife had just, uh, just had twins or is about to have twins and I got an email from my agents asking if I would do a storyline you know the zombie the zombie thing I didn't know it was gonna be a zombie like I obviously knew Nick was dead um but I didn't know what they exactly what they had in store but it was you know it was like the height of the pandemic and Mm -hmm. You know, we, she was just about to give birth, and I, we sort of decided it would be a good idea to say yes, to keep it sort of, to keep that fire, like, as an option, you know, to keep that option open. And um, so I did it and, and had a great time, and then, and then we moved back to America, and I got another call from Marnie directly, the casting director, who Marnie I love. Saida. and. Yeah. Marnie Saida, and um, she said, okay, it was, I think it was a Friday. I was watching the movie Dune. I was not expecting Marnie Saida to start blowing up my phone. Like, I was just in the movie theater, you know what I mean, with with some friends and my wife. And, uh, And I get, like, a missed call and a text from Marnie during the movie, and I was like, what is going on? It's like... 7.30 7.30 at night on a Friday, you know? Um, very unusual. And it's I very get, late. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, and then I, so I think at one point I went to the bathroom just to, like, look at what it was, and I saw her text, and they, it, it sounded like they were in a pickle, which was, I think it's fine to say it now. At the time, it was all very, like, hush-hush, but um, sure. she Brandon was supposed to be in it. Uh, 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 you know, Brandon, um, Stefan, uh, Jake, Stefano, uh, Stefan, you know, um, and he got COVID and I think they were in a total scramble because they needed somebody to start Monday or Tuesday. And, you know, there's that whole strip scene. So there was like dance rehearsals and there was a whole big to do for that. 
And one of the writers had, you know, instead of postponing the whole thing, um, you know, thought of the idea of like, well, what if we had, what if we have Blake do it? Anyway, she pitched the whole thing to me. Uh, they made it work on both sides. You know, we negotiated and, um, and I was stoked. It was so much fun. I had a blast. And at the end of that, Albert and I had a talk and Albert said, um, would you be interested in, you know, coming back on a more full-time basis? And I said, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, and then I didn't hear anything for ages. Um, wow. And then there was the heaven story and I said, like, yeah, whatever. Um, then there was the heaven storyline <clears throat> And um, I made a big push at that point when I was there. Me and Deidre Hall got really close, and she was texting Ron about me. And, you know, there was a sort of – everyone was saying, get this guy in the show. A lot of people had my back, and it was really nice. And um, and then again, didn't hear any – you know, just uh, – you know, there was this sort of – I think Albert had said to me, he was like, you know, I think everybody really wants this to happen. It's just like the writer needs to write it. Um, you know, it's really sense. up to Ron. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, again, like I just did my thing. You leave, you go on with your life. And then, um, yeah, sure enough, I, I got a call. I guess probably like it was, it's always like when it airs, like I think it was probably seven, eight months later um, that I got a call. Uh, I think it aired in February and I got a call in March, um, to come back on contract. That, that timeline seems about right. Because I always keep having to remember that the show, the show shoots, my God, I cannot say that like that. The show shoots, there we go, <laughs> six months ahead and it's crazy. I, it's I crazy. just having to keep remember, and when I'm hearing the story, I was like, oh my gosh, um, because when you mentioned Brandon Barrage having COVID, I was like, I do remember this, but I was like, but that was so long ago. And I was like, is it? Did he get it? Was again? So and I was like, ago. oh wait, I do remember this. And then I was like, I have yeah. to remember. I have to go back because that was then, and then this happened, and then that. Ha it's just, yeah. it's just so yeah. crazy. Ages ago, years, you know. It it it, does, it definitely feels like years and I, I yes the heaven and and literally the heaven storyline happened and I literally sat here and I said how is Nick Fallon in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure <laughs> that he he isn't? I was like looking I was like obviously Marlena should be here but uh, Kayla <laughs> should be here. But Kate and Nick are on the wrong side of the tracks here, so I'm kind of yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. I was wondering what deals were made in order for them to be in the in the pearly gates because there was no way Nick where they were. Them. Yeah, no, not at all. No, it was nice <laughs> though, but it was also going like, yeah, I don't know. What, where but I mean, he it, Nick was properly like, I think he was locked downstairs. <laughs> I mean, I think he was somebody. I, I, well, I mean, I think he was. I don't. I mean, my perception was that. I mean, the way I, the way I, I loved that storyline. Actually, I, I think it, you know some people thought it was goofy, but um, I actually thought it was really funny, in a sort of tongue-in-cheek sort of way. And um, I sort of took it that heaven and hell were a sort of like corporation. <laughs> Almost in the way of like uh, the Albert Brooks movie. Um, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's that movie called? With Meryl, you know, uh, with Meryl Streep. Yeah. Um, Google is our friend. Anyway. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, but and that Nick was sort of mostly working downstairs, but obviously had to go upstairs for a certain things but he that his real boss was was the devil defending your life is the movie defending your life thank you thank you thank you never heard it in that comparison before but you know makes sense now and while <laughs> hilarious but it still makes sense and obviously as 
we have even mentioned, there was such a good response to just seeing you. You had, I love hearing the support from from the, the cast and the show, and you're getting to, even in this new role now, in working with, with, with Dee, the, the scenes are airing this week where Everett is having those intense therapy sessions with Marlena and mm. having to get that opportunity to work with her in this kind of capacity because you really did not get the opportunity to really work with her initially when you were no. on the show as Nick. No. And now I'm getting to work with her on that level. I mean, what has that been like for for her? I have a funny story for her uh, about her too, which I will say after your answer. Yeah, I mean, I the people had always fans had always been asking for like a Nick going to therapy with Marlena storyline, and you know they finally sort of get it with in this incarnation. Um, she's just incredible. She's a real like she's the queen. You know what I mean? Um, and she and so working with her feels like that, and. Um, She's a she's an icon. She's an incredible actor. She's smart as hell. She uh, loves running lines like I do uh, in order to get it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so much fun. Uh, we get to sort of go at each other, but there's also a lot of empathy there. Like there, people are in store for a wild ride with the two of us. I think it's an interesting point that you made too because I never well I never heard and and guys if you ever have any clips of Nick and Marlena together please send it because I may have seen them and I forgot it's kind of like how that clip came about of Nick and Stephanie interacting before and we both for those that don't know we both actually commented <laughs> and went we have absolutely no idea about this scene because i don't remember it either and i feel like maybe that could have happened with nick and marlene but i think it was interesting that you brought that up because especially since you were so your character at the time was so involved in that storyline with gabby and will and how the character of Nick I was. think that was during the Chelsea days, though. That was... Um, what? That was from before. That was... Or Melanie, even. You know, I think it was in that Nick-Melanie era. Gosh. Nick. Post-Chelsea, maybe around Melanie. Um, it looked like summertime, I think. You know, there was, like, Fourth of July barbecues and... There was, she was maybe dating the, um, what's his name? Uh, my brain doesn't work, but, um, he's blonde and he was on 90210. Oh my gosh, is it, um, gosh, oh my gosh, I'm now forgetting. This is how, this is how bad it is. Cause I know, I was like, oh my God, we're not talking about, we're not talking about Max, we're not talking about, um, the, the, we're not talking Horton, about he was a Horton. He was a Horton. Um, no. Donovan not Mark. I know name. Mark well. Trent Donovan? T- Trent Donovan, I think? Trent, t- t- yeah, yeah, yeah. You're close. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Tate Donovan is, is the, uh, the older actor who's great. Uh, but Trevor. Trevor Donovan. Trevor Donovan. There we go. There we go. We were going to get it eventually. And I was like, this is, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. now showing our ages, everybody. It's now showing exactly <laughs> that we are now at that point in life where... Oh, I I did not sleep that well, so I am uh, the, yeah. My well, brain is like welcome yeah. to the club, but um, <laughs> you know. So that that is where we are. But it's just it, it, that would have been an interesting pivotal point to uh, have that happen at that time if she was still on the show and this was going on. But it, that was just that was just an interesting caveat because I would have loved to have seen Marlena's involvement with that and totally how how that interaction would have been between her and, and Nick during that. So that was a, that was an interesting uh, comment that you made there. Cause now it made me think about that. But the funny story I had about her, I, I actually met her for the, I've had her on the show, but I met her for the first time at day of days this past October. And mm-hmm. when I met her, uh, so what happened was to set it up is that we were doing the interviews in the room. And by the time, that they were supposed to get to my outlet. 
it was time to wrap up. So I didn't get a chance to interview oh, her, her, yeah. her or her or Drake. So my consolation prize, which I honestly was like, that was the best present of my life, was getting uh-huh. a picture with, was getting a picture with with them. Uh, and um. so I was like, oh my god, I would totally love this. And so when I took the picture with D. And they took like a couple shots to get him in, and in, in the and the final thing she said to me before she walked away, she turns around and she points at me and she goes, "You better make sure those look good before you post them." And I said, <laughs> "I said, absolute queen right there," because yeah. honestly, yeah, totally. I literally was just like beaming when she said that to me, and I was just like, "That's why you're the queen, baby. That's it. That was it. <laughs> that is why yeah, you are the queen." I was and and everybody who heard it, they started laughing. And I was like, "That's D." And I was like, I, "I'm aware," uh, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> well aware, but uh, that was that was the, that was the highlight of my. Of I my love day. it. I that love it. The highlight of my day was was those two and and getting. I'm the sure, well. amazing. So, yeah, the king and queen of that show. I was like, it was just absolutely, absolutely. Hundred percent. Yeah. I. Hundred percent. I can. Icons personified for sure and. I had a question that came from the artist formerly known as Twitter Uh for you, (laughs) and I want to make sure I have her name right, because I think it was from Canadian Girl, and her question was, even though it's not days related, they wanted to know what it was like when you did Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. Man. That was that was a great experience. Uh, flew down to Albuquerque for that. Uh, one of a few times I, I shot in Albuquerque. Um, my I shot a movie with my my wife that my wife directed there. Um, a couple of years after that, with Josh Hartnett and uh, Aza Gonzalez, and uh, that's a cool movie should, people should check out. But. Yeah, so I I I wasn't there that long, but everyone was so nice. Uh, Aaron Paul, you know, did the scenes with Aaron, and um, he was lovely, lovely to work with. And a guy called Damon Harriman, who played the other meth head, mm-hmm. who I think ended up being the he was in the recent Tarantino movie, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He played Manson, actually. Um, okay, and. Uh, you know, they really let us find the scene. They really wanted me to take my time approaching him and coming out and seeing him. And uh, I had just done a movie. I felt really versed in playing a meth head because I just did a movie called Meth Head where we, we that were, was the last time we talked was during when you oh did that God. movie. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. That's ages ago. Um, but so I was, you know, I had this whole, during that film, I came up with this approach where I was, I would always, I was always trying to figure out like what day of tweaking I was on. Um, you know, cause if you're day one, you're sort of normal, like you're just a little up, things are great. Day twos, you know, you're starting to, things are, you're starting to fray and, you know, a day three or day four of tweaking and not sleeping much and you know, you're when you're on a bender like that, um, things are getting pretty dark. Uh, and when I got that Breaking Bad edition, I was like, "This is we're we're further we're further on the spectrum than uh, than I than I was in that in the Meth Head movie." So, uh, you know, that that character was sort of full fledged, like you know, almost a, like still a still a human, still had a heart, but was was crossing over into zombie. Um, but you know, try to give it as much um, humanity as possible. So it kind of helped with the zombie role. So there you go. <laughs> That's how, <laughs> how I looked at that. That's great. Uh, yeah, we had a, uh, we actually had a couple of, of other, well, there was one more I wanted to ask that came from the artist formerly known as Twitter, and uh, I believe this one was from <laughs> Emmett the Beast, and just basically wanted to know. If you had any scenes coming up with um, and Samaj as well, they both asked it in the same vein. Uh, so Samaj first asked, "Do you have anything coming up with Jada and on yeah. the show?" 
He's a huge yeah. Rafe. He's a huge Samaj is a huge Rafe and Jada fan. So um, definitely. Well, you know, I won't. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, we do, and uh, I hope I don't upset you. Yeah. Uh oh. All right, so it won't be me that gets upset, Samaj. Just so you know, he's letting you know it might it might not be the way that you want, but it's a so. So you gotta you gotta <laughs> roll with it. And Emmett Emmett the Beast's question was, I was going if they were able to pull this off, this would be incredible. But he he asked, will do you think it would ever come out that Everett Lynch is Nick Fallon? And I'm sitting. Do here going, I think? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I said, honestly, if they could make that work, that'd be great. But the problem is, they would have recognized your face already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anything's possible in Salem, right? Uh, but yeah, I think like, I think people should buckle into this being a different, different, different storyline. I'm I'm just curious just to find out this whole Everett Bobby connection really because I'm just is it DID basically multiple personality disorder or something because obviously there's more to this story that we haven't even touched yet that hasn't been explored and I'm just ready to find out exactly what that yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I obviously can't say too much, but. Uh, you know, people are they're they're teasing. I think it's like it, people are gonna you're gonna start to. I'll say this: if you keep poking at a at a sleeping bear, the bear might wake up. Okay, okay, that's a good tease. I'll go with that one. We'll see what happens. But uh, this and uh, this is my opinion question. This is as a as a fan question for you. Uh huh. When, only because you were involved with that Horton set once upon a time. Mm -hmm. What were your What were your thoughts when that iconic set hit the fire? Yeah, good question. I a few things. <clears throat> I thought this is a great storyline. I think that it's human and dramatic it's it, it it does sort of there's something about burning that house down that feels like it it strikes at the core of days of our lives mm -hmm. um it, it's you know it's, it's to strike in the heart um and also i thought you know this house could could use a reno um use that fire insurance uh, just from like a production design standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just you know, and updating things is not is never never terrible. Um, and yeah, I, I I I but but I I think it's 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 dramatic. You know, uh, it's intense to see because it's such a centerpiece of the show and has been for for so long. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, everybody had their opinions of it. There was obviously some upset, but I, I, I also was very surprised to see that that was taking place. But that chair, not a scratch on it. So you know what? That chair was saved. Exactly. I'm happy. Uh, exactly. So it, it definitely brought a lot of the icons together for that particular moment, which was very not heart wrenching, but it was heartwarming. Let's put it that way. Mm, and yeah, yeah. I loved every aspect of that, and God, it just. All right, I'm I'm catching my feels because it just made me think of Bill Hayes and singing always during that. And yeah, I yeah. just I just want to say out there to everyone and to you and the rest of the Days family, we miss you, Bill. You always will hold a place in our hearts and. What a what a wonderful man! I was so happy I, I had the chance to meet him in my years doing this, and he was such a gem of a human. And we miss you terribly, for sure. Yeah, what a gem! Yeah, I mean, just an incredible, 
uh, like OG, really. You know, like he was he was here when it all began. He's like he's I don't know what nine decades in Hollywood. You know? Yeah. Uh, Such maybe a... maybe eight maybe eight. Uh, but Such a rich I mean history. just yeah. incredible. Um, what what an, I I feel really lucky to have to have been there for his last Christmas and to he was always so warm to me and um what a what an incredible man and and thoughts and prayers with uh Susan during this time um I know she's going through it and uh anyway yeah lots of love to both of them absolutely what a way to end the show on a somber note, but it was also, again, a very heartwarming one. And I, it really was. And just to share that with you and connecting back with you again, it's been way too long since we had a It really has. It's so great talking to you. It's always it's always a pleasure to, to speak with you. One of these days we will meet on the West Coast and have that yes. official, official face-to-face conversation. But until then, this was great. It always... It always is when I get to talk to you and and see the life through your lens on Instagram. It's 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 been fantastic. Very happy for you. It's my pleasure to to be here with you. Uh, love to chat anytime. Absolutely, Blake Barris, everybody. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Many thanks to Blake Barris for stopping by the Buzzcast today. You can follow him on Instagram at his name. Blake Barris. But that's going to do it for me here at the Buzzcast. I'm Navelle J. Lee, making sure you keep getting the latest buzz with Buzzworthy Radio by logging on to our website at buzzworthyradiocast.com. We're also on X at Buzzworthy Radio, and you can find us on Facebook by liking our page. And you can download our podcast from iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and now Amazon Music. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Stay in the know. Catch up on all the Buzz podcasts and videos at buzzworthyradiocast.com. Keep getting the latest buzz with Buzzworthy Radio, now on Amazon Music.